In this section, we're going to be taking a look at our trigonometric functions and talking about the derivatives of those trigonometric functions. So before we get into the derivatives of those things, I just want to talk about what are these six trigonometric functions and what are some of the important relationships that we're going to need for these trigonometric functions. So as a reminder of what the six trigonometric functions are, I'm writing them out right now. Those six trigonometric functions in a very particular order are the sine function, the cosine function, the tangent function, the cotangent function, the secant function, and the cosecant function. Now we're also going to do a brief review of some identities that are going to be incredibly helpful along the way. So these identities include, first off, quotient identities. Since we have access to the quotient rule, might as well make use of some of our quotient identities. There are two in particular that you are supposed to know all about. That is that the tangent of x is equal to the sine of x divided by the cosine of x, and that the cotangent of x is equal to the cosine of x divided by the sine of x. Which means that if we can come up with derivatives for the sine and cosine, I can then use the quotient rule to come up with the derivatives of the tangent of x and the cotangent of x. Additionally, we'll need some reciprocal identities. The reciprocal identities let us know that the secant of x is equal to 1 over the cosine of x, and that the cosecant of x is equal to 1 over the sine of x. Now, there are more reciprocal identities than these, but these are the two that I want to make sure that we have ready to go in our heads for what we're about to do. The Pythagorean identities will come up as well. There are three of these. They all involve squares of trigonometric functions. So the first one is that the sine squared of x plus the cosine squared of x is equal to 1. If I were to divide through by the cosine squared of x, I would come up with the tangent squared of x plus 1 is equal to the secant squared of x. And if I were instead to divide through by the sine squared of x, I would get that 1 plus the cotangent squared of x is equal to the cosecant squared of x. Additionally, when we actually take these derivatives, we're going to need two sum identities. This is when you have the sine of a sum of two angles, or the cosine of a sum of two angles. Now for both of these identities, you start with the trig function of the first angle times, second thing you write down is always going to be the cosine of beta. For the sine, you use the same, and for the cosine, you use the conflicting then use the other two trig functions that haven't been used up here yet. We've used the sine of alpha, we haven't yet used the cosine of alpha. We've used the cosine of beta, we haven't yet used the sine of beta. Down here we've used the cosine of alpha, so we still need the sine of alpha. We've used the cosine of beta, so we still need to use the sine of beta. Those are the two sum identities that we're going to be using when we derive where these derivatives come from.